Cataractcoach.com, we have a routine case here, which will proceed very well. But the issue is going to be once we insert the IOL into the eye and start to unfold it, one haptic is going to be stuck to the optic. And so what we'll talk about is what are our options at that point for releasing that one haptic? We certainly can't leave it like that. If you want to skip right to that point, that's going to be at the three-minute mark. Go ahead and fast forward. But for the other people who want to learn, watch how we do the rest of this routine case. It's a very nice, clean routine case. So here's our phaco incision, temporally, single plane, nice tunnel length made with a steel keratome. We're going to do our capsular axis as well. Those are my forceps that are marked off at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters. So we can measure like I just did there and continue the rexes. That's going to allow me to create an ideal capsule rex. I know in my mind now what's the appropriate size. I want 5 or 5.5 five millimeters, somewhere in that range. I want it to just barely overlap the optic of the lens for 360 degrees. And, of course, I want it round and well-centered in the eye. That looks great. For our hydrate section, we're using bound salt solution on a 27-gauge blunt cannula. We get a fluid wave, and we get another fluid wave, and it's very important to get those fluid waves. And here we prolapse the nucleus partially out of the bag. It's about halfway in the bag, halfway outside the bag, more dispersive. A viscoelastic was just injected. And now for the FACO probe, high flow, high vacuum mode, buzzing in the center of the nucleus, chopping it, boom, we have two halves. The first half can be emulsified relatively quickly. And again, I'm using a high flow rate of 50 or 60 cc's a minute. So things happen relatively quickly here. Second half of the nucleus is brought up as well, and all we have to do is simply keep it occluded on the phaco tip, and the high vacuum level, high flow, and phaco power modulations will allow us to quickly remove it. So the nucleus is out of the eye just like that, and time for our cortex removal. Now for the lens choice here, we are using a single piece acrylic monofocal lens. It's a hydrophobic acrylic, and it's one of these preloaded lenses. Preloaded means the technician puts the viscoelastic inside the injector and the lens is already inside the injector, but it does require a little bit of preparation ahead of time. Now, sometimes we'll run out of viscoelastic. In a case like this, which is a larger myopic eye, bigger anterior chamber, anterior chamber volumes higher, and we're using the smaller sizes of these syringes of viscoelastic. So in this case, the technician ran out of the viscoelastic. And so there's a little bit less than an ideal amount of viscoelastic in the injector. We typically put the dispersive in the injector. This is the cohesive now filling the capsule bag. I certainly would have liked to add this to the injector had I known, so the technician didn't alert me. And here comes the lens fixating the eye. There it is, delivered, goes in the eye quite nicely. Lens is beautifully folded. Everything looks great there. And the leading haptic is already unfolding. The trailing haptic is not unfolding yet. So we'll rotate the lens, give it some time. I try to swing it back and forth. And you got to be careful here. You don't want to put too much stress on the caps or bag. It's still not doing anything. What are our options now? Some people use forceps and squeeze the haptic. In this case, I tend to just push a little bit more, and eventually it breaks that grip and releases. So I think the error here was we didn't put enough viscoelastic into the injector, and that's because we ran out being a large, highly myopic eye with a large anterior chamber volume. We ran low on the dispersive, and my technician didn't want to use any of the cohesive injector. So in retrospect, I would have used any viscoelastic that's available, dispersive or cohesive, just to have something in the injector. Without the viscoelastic or at least some saline covering the lens, the lens tends to be slightly tacky and the haptics tend to stick to the optic. And we want to avoid that, obviously. But everything goes well here at the end. We're done. We're going to seal up the incision here. I like to do the hydration there on the roof of the incision. And then we'll center up the lens and we can see we have a beautiful overlap of the optic with the rexus. Interesting case. I hope you liked it. Just keep in mind, if you're loading a lens, use plenty of viscoelastic. Thank you for watching.